you. What up? All right. Um, so, uh, we got another one from Conan. Hmm. Okay. What we got? This is Conan on Hot Ones. Ah. Conan loves his wings. Okay. I guess he does. I didn't think he would like spicy things. Really? Okay. Or maybe, maybe, you know, maybe he does like spicy things. <laughs> yep. Maybe Ginger's like spicy things. I was say his hair is red. Who knows? But, um, yeah, man, it should be funny. Most of these dudes' interviews are pretty hilarious. Yeah. All right, man, you ready? Yep. What's gonna happen? <laughs> What's wrong with you people? You don't know what real danger looks like anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, okay. <laughs> it's not hot for him. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we close out season 23 with Conan O'Brien. He's an Emmy award-winning talk show host who had a nearly three-decade-long run on Late Night. You can keep up with him these days on Conan O'Brien Meets a Friend wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, and he also yeah. has a brand new travel show visiting Conan fans all over the world. Yeah. It's called Conan O'Brien Must Go, and it's set to release on Max April 18th. Conan O'Brien, welcome to the show. Sean, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I ask in good faith, how are you around hot sauce before we get started? I grew up in an Irish house uh, and an Irish Catholic home in Boston. Uh, I never saw a spice until I was about 52 years old. So I'm um, terrible with hot food. I, I grew up on tasteless food. So this is a whole new experience for me. Okay. <laughs> Damn, 52, <laughs> no spices. If you don't mind, Sean, I'd like to get a quick uh, baseline read. Mm -hmm. uh, I brought my personal physician, Dr. Oh. Arroyo. This is Dr. Arroyo. What? Hi, how are you? Amazing, yeah. hi, nice That's to meet you. Okay. You don't have to talk to him, just to me. Um, <laughs> just get a baseline temperature. What are we looking at? Nice endpoint. Nice endpoint, and I run a little cool. Yeah. Um, also, I've been my doctor for about 25 years. Yeah, yeah. Where did you go to medical school? Uh, in 1998. Where? Where? Oh, uh, <laughs> out of state. You should go. Okay. I apologize. <laughs> this nigga like said in 1998. He's not the best, but it's very affordable. Okay. All right. This should be easy. Get nothing here. <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. I've never seen any steam. Is this what you got? I guess this is where you start, yeah, I think right? They're hot. I don't fear your wings, man. <laughs> Bring what you got, okay? <laughs> so the travel log is taking up these? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, what the hell? Neat left. platform, yeah. No. So the travelogue is taking on so many different forms, from mm -hmm. the anthropological approach of someone like Anthony Bourdain to the thrill-seeking perspective of a personality like Bear Grylls. Yes. How would you define comedy's role in the genre? Like, is it a hack being funny and connecting with new people <laughs> and cultures? I love travel, and my mission is that you learn nothing about the country. My job is that you know less about the country after I'm done than when I started. So that's why I love this new show, okay. is Max Damn. just let us go for it. And uh, we visited a bunch of countries, and uh, you're dumber. You're dumber after you see the show, <laughs> but we had a lot of fun. Was there anything intentional about releasing the show on your birthday, or is that just a charming oh, coincidence? Wow. Thank you for doing your research. Um, it was a total coincidence. HBO Max called us. Is it HBO Max or just Max? I think it's just straight Max. I can't get used to it. <laughs> That's not a better name. Anyway, uh, Max said, um, Max, that really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> it is kind of personal because it's just like someone's name. You know yeah, what I mean? exactly. Like uh, Max, uh, this said, hey, you're, you're going to drop. I think that's what the kids say. Uh, on April 18th, and I said, hey, that's my birthday, and they went, huh. So I don't think it was anything intentional. It just happened to be my birthday. Well, happy birthday to you, Cody. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Are you ready to move on here to sauce number two on that note? Yeah, please, because that first one, I got nothing. What's I this? What kind of sauce is this? So this one is called Smoky J here. Smoky J. Smoky J. Anything I need to know about this sauce before I bite in? I think the less you know, the better. Okay. It's getting real small. Okay, Smokey J. Mm -hmm. Okay, damn, okay. That's the second one. Mm -hmm. How many are there? Ten. I like this, so far. I so. 
Okay. I am unfazed. Do you mind if I? Yeah, no, go ahead. It's your chair. Your wings. Thank you. Wings. Thank you. Take ownership from that Thank side you. of the table. Go ahead. How often do you show up on location somewhere, yeah, right? You get to a destination and your first and immediate thought is, how the hell am I going to make this funny? Often. That's 70%. 70% of the time. And what I call it, I talk to my head writer, Mike Sweeney, and I say, you've brought me to a comedy vacuum. There's nothing here. You, there's nothing. Once we were doing a shoot in Finland and I was in the Arctic Circle and I was standing on a tundra and in the distance about 400 yards away was some reindeer and my producers just said, and go. And I'm looking around. And I'm like, what, what am I supposed to do, improv with a sheet of ice? But in those situations, sometimes when you think it's gonna go very badly, it goes well. Sometimes you think, oh my God, I have it made. This is the perfect remote and you can't get anything. So it's always going oh. to a Vegas craps table. You never know. His remotes. Hmm. Again, it's called Hot Ones. <laughs> what the fuck's going on? This is nothing. <laughs> I'll remember You these, got nothing. I'll remember these words. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God, it's gonna get, no, he's gonna have a hot. This isn't even. I've yet to have any spice at all. And He's you know what? Come. I've got a little eye watering. I think you're gonna I think teach that's me. because you're meeting your idol. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get that from just about everyone in your demographic. Right. So <laughs> oh, oh, their eyes got to cheer up. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay. There you go. You got three in there. Yeah. Where's he gonna put them on a. So on a late night show, mm -hmm. when you see the host toss a commercial, right? Yep. And then yep. they lean in and they talk to the guest with the mics cut. Yeah. Is that usually like a real chat? And if so, what are some of the go-to It depends on the host. In the old days, back in the days when I was doing it and there was just a couple of us, uh, oftentimes there wasn't much chat. Really not much at all. You know, if you were talking to a letterman, he wouldn't say too much. The other guy, you know, I don't know where he was, but I <laughs> was trying guy, to make something Jay happen. I tried to keep the rhythm going. And sometimes if I couldn't get them interested, I'd try and say something provocative. Like, I bet you live four more years tops. And <laughs> you could see them get a little rattled and the band would be playing. But I just wanted to <laughs> yeah, keep them alert. But I remember I said that to B. Arthur and I was right. B. Arthur? You yeah. said that to B. Arthur. Yeah, I said four years tops. <laughs> And it was uh, three years, 11 months. And sands of time. Yeah. Well, I'll <laughs> say this. I know you, uh, this is important for me to say. I've watched your show. You are a very good interviewer. Thank you. And um, so without this, I mean, this is fun. I like this <laughs> and I get why you guys do it. And it's really fun and it's compelling. But uh, you are a very serious interviewer. You take it seriously and you ask really good questions. So oh, thank you. I, I'm very impressed with your dedication to it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, look, you'll cut that out. I'm sure. <laughs> that won't make it in. No laughs there. Uh, yes, there was. <laughs> what is this called? This is uh, Los Calientes. Very okay. nice. Oh, Los shit. Calientes? Okay, mm -hmm. very nice. Dr. Royal. Yes, sir. About to get high. Let's get a baseline pulse here. Yeah. It's kind of starting to race a oh, little sure, bit. Oh, sure, sure. That's you're, real you're, just that typical? you're just choking. So sorry. No, no, you just feel for the pulse. All right. You've been with uh, me for a long time, but... It's there. Okay. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> it's very good. I can very tell. inexpensive. I can tell. Yeah. He has an <laughs> office in the desert. <laughs> what do you think is the most annoying trait or thing a guest can do when appearing on a talk show? The worst thing a guest can do is tell the audience it's not going well. Mm. I've seen it happen many times. It's an amateur move uh, because the host can do a lot to let people think it's going great, even if it's not. There are many things the host can do. The host can be enjoying. The host can act a little bit. The host can do things. Audiences want to see a good show. They want to see a good interview. And uh, I was always amazed when someone would come out and they'd be doing okay and they'd make a couple of jokes and it's fine. And then they would just go and they would look right out to camera and they would say, this just isn't going very well, is it? And you could feel, I would look out at the audience, maybe 200 people sitting there and I'd see 200 souls leave 200 bodies <laughs> and float up through the ceiling because they were, they, they were just told they were not getting a good show. Right. No, that's not show business. Show business is you're getting the greatest show in the world. I don't think there's a wing here. 
that I can't eat like it's ice cream. I, I seriously, I don't think there's a wing on this table that I cannot devour like it's cool whipped cream <laughs> on an August afternoon. Okay? You're like uh, a Ric Flair cutting a promo right now. Exactly. All right? That's the energy that I'm putting Woo! up on. Yeah, you're really <laughs> challenging the wings over Dr. Royal, please, Dude, could you step in? Do. My pocket's getting full. Oh, yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Is there a most harrowing encounter with wildlife that you can recall from all the times that you had animal uh, experts on the shit. show? Yes. It happened during the uh, Turner phase of, our, of my career. We uh, had someone who brought a lot of animals on and one of them was a water buffalo. Massive beast. And I'm standing next to it and I said, well, I don't even know what we do with it. And someone, a producer just said, well, just hop up on it. Oh, I'm in yeah. rehearsal mode. So you just do what you're told. And as I'm getting up on it, Andy said, don't get on that. But of course, I never listened to Andy. You gotta commit to the So bit. I get up on the water buffalo, and as my ass hits the water buffalo, beats this size, it freaks, it tosses me up into the air. We had it on camera. I go up, and I come down on my hip Damn. on a cement floor. And as you know, in a studio, cement, it's poured concrete so the cameras can roll. So I bounce off my hip. It really fucking hurt. Water buffalo makes this bellowing sound, charges, everyone runs away, all the cameramen run away, takes out a camera. Camera people are scrambling and slips and falls, then gets up and looks at me. I am lying on the floor, I jump and I run in the other direction and leap over the talk show couch. I had a hematoma on my hip that was so big I couldn't get my jeans on or off. Oh my so they like God. cut me out of my jeans. It was this giant, and I just kept thinking, why? It's because you do a show every day. You get into the let's go, let's go, um, let's get this thing going. And I'm there and I'm just thinking about the next thing. And a voice just said, hop on. And I did. False sense of security. Uh, just the rhythm idiot, of the show. Absolute yeah. idiocy. But um, <laughs> yeah. I lived to tell the tale. And uh, the water buffalo and I made amends. We're good now. Okay, right. up there. Fantastic. I, this I has love it. I love it. I don't know how to the problem is. I know, you might be running out of pockets. No, no, Thankfully, no, you do have a lot of them. Yeah, that's okay. We got he's, pockets. He's eating them all. He's eating all of them. Do you take any kind of perverse pride in the sheer number of hours of television that you've created? I was never that excited about volume. I, it, to me, it's whether it's good or not. Or, you know, and, and so to me, it was much more stay focused on let's really try and keep trying to make something that's really memorable and will stick around and, and then get back to it. And what I'm interested in is how it looks in the rear view for you. Like, does it all fit neatly into distinct eras or is it all kind of a blur? I would say there are eras. There's the early era in 93 to 95 where I'm uh, in living in sheer terror all the time because I'm waiting for a phone call any second <laughs> that I've been canceled. So that is a real era. That whole run, Rockefeller Center feels like an era. All the craziness I went through in whatever, 2010 is a distinct chapter. Turner is a distinct chapter. Um, getting to do the podcast, which I love. Sitting down and getting to talk to somebody for an hour is such a joy after almost three decades of, that was great, thanks a lot. Okay, we're gonna take a little break. We'll be right back. You know, that, uh, that I loved it, but I love this a lot. Different kind of muscle. It's different now, and I love trying this. And then with this new, Max show coming out April 18th. Um, I just like that we're really getting the resources to do one of these the way I always wanted to do it. So uh, yeah, I would say they, they look like very distinct separate times. Yeah. They do. Uh, oh, my hands are all, hold on a sec. Dr. Arroyo. <laughs> Can you open this please? This dude is not a doctor. <laughs> Multifaceted. Doctor. Thank you, doctor. He is a homeless man. Yeah. Oh my God. Whoa. <laughs> What's gonna happen? What's wrong with you people? You don't know what real danger looks like anymore. <laughs> Incredible. This is gonna be painful. So, my question to you. No. Oh is, my God. is there a point when these get warm? Uh. Just a little bit warm. Oh! <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Oh, here's a question for you. Yes. 
Is it true that while writing at SNL that you would sometimes go downstairs to Letterman's 6A <laughs> studio FBI and then somewhere. write material from his desk yes. at the studio? I would sit, they had like a, a covering over his desk to protect it from any asshole. <laughs> and so we were- uh, He's not sweating at all. Nine, and I would go down to, uh, he was in 6A, which is the studio I eventually took over, but I didn't know that was gonna happen. And I would sit at Dave's desk, and I had Dave's perspective, and I would sit there and I would work on a sketch. And then this crazy situation develops, one in a billion chance where I get a chance to audition for that show and then get it. But if you had told me that when I was sitting behind Dave's desk as a Saturday Night Live writer, I'd have said there's no way. I'd have also said there's no way there's ever gonna be a Charlie Rose show where you eat hot wings. <laughs> but I've been, I would have been wrong both times. That's exactly right. Yeah. You can't predict the future. You just don't know what's going to Connect the dots looking back, never yeah. looking forward. When you took over that 6A studio, did you uh -huh. see any remnants of the old guard? Were there like pencils stuck in the ceiling or anything uh, no, like No, because they put us in different offices. So we were not in Dave's offices, but we had his studio. There weren't remnants, but there were physical remnants. There were people. There were camera people. There was this guy, Bailey, who was a cameraman who had been with Dave the whole time. And so he was our cameraman. And I'll never forget that we kept coming up with these ideas that were much more, involved a lot of running around. I was kinetic, Robert's kinetic, the writers we hired were very kinetic. I had just turned 30. So all my ideas were, I've got an idea, I start running, and the camera's <laughs> running with me, and I jump out the window, and the cameraman jumps too. And <laughs> Bailey, who had been there, probably since the 50s, and was used to watching, you know, shooting, I don't know, some- Edward R. Murrow. <laughs> Edward R. Murrow, smoke a cigarette. <laughs> down to the filter, no filter, no filter. It's Edward R. Murrow, goddammit. That's what he was used to. And then suddenly I'm here saying, I've got an idea, Bailey, we're gonna put rockets on your feet and you're gonna fire you down the hall. How old are you, Bailey? 77. Yeah, it's gonna be fun, Bailey, fun. Who the hell is Bailey? The bomb, if he, Arroyo, this has to be hot. My hands are very slippery. But was it a four-year medical school? It was uh, supposed to be. It was supposed to go. be. Did you ever graduate? He's gone. Oh my god. Is this the last one, the bomb? Oh my gosh. There's, how is this possible? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Come on, man, are we doing this or not? Yeah, no, I'm with you. Why are we doing this or not? No, I'm on the same What's page. What's the point of even being alive <laughs> if we can't do this? Right, now I really do feel alive. I do feel alive. You're okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. I might hiccup through this yeah. whole thing. Yeah. This one, I'm not going to lie, <laughs> I'm feeling it a little bit. <laughs> Ah, uh, the water first I'm time. feeling yeah. this one. A little tremor. It's just starting to peek through, you know? <laughs> I'm hiccuping. A little bit. I can't stop. There's a little bit of a burning, no. but not much. <laughs> Is that milk? Would milk you as president do you think would be the best podcast? No, guy? So you Brian needs a friend. So you you tried to talk. Yeah. But your lips have been paralyzed, and what I heard was I had time gone by some resident. I got that out. I got that out. I think maybe you're having a problem. No, I don't think so. Right? I think everyone in the studio will agree. <laughs> Which U.S. president do you think would make the best podcast guest on Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend? Do they have to be living? No. Richard Nixon. Nixon? Oh my God, it'd be fantastic. He's such a comedy figure. When you think about it, and we could get into water, and then he would try to be funny, like, I've got a funny idea. You know, it would be fantastic. <laughs> the voice alone, I would have to say, probably uh, Lincoln. Can I just take a second and say this is starting to hit? <laughs> I no, yeah. Can I just say, I don't, I don't have a lot of regrets in my career. Pouring this onto the wing. <laughs> right. And then licking it off. And in retrospect, I bet you it's good footage. No, yeah. It's good, <laughs> but, it's good TV. Um, I'm starting to feel some sensations. And, and you know what, Conan? Yeah. If you weren't so braggadocious in this front half, I probably would have stopped you from doing that. No, you know, no, no, I would have protected you, you from yourself. You can't stop me from being who I am. <laughs> That's exactly right. To quote my, my hero, Popeye, I am what I am, okay? <laughs> the hero. I said it and Gandhi said it. The, the, and, and Popeye, that is, the, that is who I am. I've gotta go for it. Whatever I do, I have to go 100 I know, you gotta commit to the bit. Gotta commit it's to the bit. It's not a bit. This is life. This, this show is to you. This show's a Because it's not bit. a bit, it's your show. Don't say commit to the bit. This is life. Right, you're you right. gotta grab it by the balls. You're, no, Dr. Uh, you know Dr. Royal, would you chuck on my yeah. phone here? 
Just get a quick <laughs> test. Yeah. Yeah, oh, or that not big. good. Do you have anything beyond that? No, he's okay. I'll just take real, you at face guy. value yeah. on that. Not yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. He's was that the last? He's not one? a good doctor. He's <laughs> an he's an affordable doctor. Do you have a, a favorite mediocre president? Uh, <clears throat> well, that's a good one. Mediocre president? That's so mean. I'm gonna go with Warren Hardy. <laughs> okay. okay, good looking guy. He was in the Oval Office like three days and he wrote on a note, I am not fit to be president. This job is too hard. And then to solve matters, Damn. he takes a train trip and dies mysteriously because he ate some bad lobster. So what? you gotta give it up for Warren G. Harding in my opinion, right? Don't you think? <laughs> no argument there. Yeah, he knew he couldn't do the job and said, you know what, has anyone got some lobster that's been out too long? I want to eat it on a train where there's no refrigeration. And that's what they did. There's another one. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do the sauce? What's on the sauce? I can't get this open. Well, this is about to break the glass. There we go. Huh? And a little bit of this on it? Yeah, go. Okay. I'll join you at the party. <laughs> That's the sound these Three Stooges used to make when they were doing anything destructive. Everybody watch the Three Stooges? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Money, money, money. <laughs> mistake. You know the are on fire. Oh, yeah. I went to announce my mistake. Go ahead. <laughs> this is not a mistake. Nothing about this is a mistake. Every step of the way, intentional. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Someone uh, say uh, Oh my god. <laughs> oh, yeah! Yeah! Uh, yeah! Ten percent. <laughs> I've never felt that yeah, high. I love it. I love it. Me too. I'm, I'm right here. For the first time in 15 years. <laughs> this is to you. Hey, to you. Call the wife. <laughs> mm. Uh, there's another yeah, one! Gotta, I mean, at this point, <laughs> what are you gonna do? This is, what's the, what, tell us what we're eating here. So, this is the Last Ab Experience. It is made with almost pure Pepper X. Pepper X? In oh my gosh. I gotta my join you at the party. Going out with a bang. <laughs> you gotta go, isn't this the season finale? You're exactly right. There needs to be a fireworks display to close things out. This is gonna hit me. <laughs> This is going to be painful. Yeah, we've all the mother sauces today. Yeah, okay, yeah. here we go. Ready? I'm ready. 30 million. Oh my god. Did you say this is pure pepper? Mm hmm. <laughs> so there's nothing here. There's no insulation. There's no safety net. No. <laughs> Straight concentrated pepper to the dome. Jesus. Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> I'm not getting it. I'm just not getting it. Oh, oh my gosh! It'll come later, Conan. What's wrong with me? Why can't I feel? Just no. wait. <laughs> Is it gonna hit me now? It's gonna hit me soon, right? It's gotta yes. build on it. It's gotta build. It's starting to build right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's building. Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of not gonna stop. No, it's not gonna but stop. That's okay. It's got a little bit of a wind up. Yeah, it's coming fast. I know. I it's know. It's coming I fast. Know. We're approaching the the peak of the mountain here. But Conan O'Brien, the good news is, that's a wrap on our lunch date with the Wings of Death. We're here about to drop. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm perfectly fucking fine. I'm not you didn't questioning come up that. with one I'm wing that had that. any effect on Conan. Because he's here to stay. Oh, woo! Oh, woo! Uh, <laughs> if you were crafting a curriculum yeah. of a comedy survey course, can you give us one book to make sure that your students understand that the building blocks of comedy are not at all new? What are you gonna read? Read widely and read well. There's comedy in the Old Testament. There's comedy in the New Testament. You can read all kinds of stuff. Just don't lock yourself in to it's gotta be some comedy from the last 10 years. No, there's great comedy out there that was written a long time ago. What's funnier than Don Quixote? Sancho Panza, you know? This is good stuff, the classics are funny. You know, you can watch, read Chaucer's tales, they're funny. There's funny everywhere, don't be a snob, look high and look low, a mad magazine is funny. There's funny stuff online all the time. There's no reason 
for us to try and exclude one category over another? These aren't the rantings of someone who's had some bad chemicals and overdid it to be funny and relevant to people who are at least 50 years younger than him. This is a guy who's just being on a show and it's legitimate. So I say here's to you, Sean. You're a great motherfucking host. Right back. And I'm glad I'm here. And I'm glad we had a great time. And I don't care. I don't care anymore. Wise words from a wise and stable man. Yes, Conan from a man O'Brien. who's doing <laughs> everything <laughs> can of death. to be on the and show that everyone has to tell young wants him to be on. Just barely, and now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. This camera, this camera, this camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. I have a show. It's on Max. They used to call it HBO, but people found that too popular. So now it's Max, because that really rolls off the tongue. And it's a funny show. Four episodes are going to drop at me going all over the world. Oh, Jesus. You can check it out April 18th. That's right. My intestines have turned into acid, and I can still remember the plug. That's a professional. If there was a mic drop, I'd do one. But I'd do a wing drop. April 18th. Check it out. Oh, shit. <laughs> Dr. Arroyo. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. That's good either. You're not a doctor, are you? I, I should be. Okay. <laughs> what? I should be. Was he going to tell you what it's at? No, he doesn't even understand the numbers. It, it's up two degrees from when the start of the show. <laughs> no lie. <laughs> That's the info I was after. I love how. You ruined me, but saved your suede I, jacket. Well, I was literally, I was literally just I know, I know, I know, I know. I, I, I literally I love that jacket, and I do not want to get into it. <laughs> you know the I jacket. I admire a guy who hosts hot ones and wears beautiful suede. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh, man. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah, okay. man. That was uh, pretty epic. You know? He handled it better than I thought he would. Definitely. Definitely. I've seen people freak out on hot ones. <laughs> he was drinking the sauce. Yeah, he, this nigga's drinking the bomb. I thought I thought the bomb was the last one. The hell? <laughs> they got the other ones. <laughs> Pepper X. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know what dude he's doing putting the wings in the pocket, but I mean, you know, it is what it is. Conan, save him. Conan definitely loves to be entertaining. You know what I'm saying? Connor is uh, very entertaining. And he is that. Jesus. Definitely. Man. Jesus. <laughs> I knew he threw up off stage. Uh, he had to. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he, either he threw up from his mouth or his ass. One of them happened. <laughs> very soon after this. That was a lot of. Yeah, explosive. Oof. Yeah, man. Oof. Definitely, man. Yeah, that's just, that's just, you know what I mean? You know, I mean, most of the time, I mean, I've ran into some hot sauces, man, but I imagine I've probably never eaten anything that's quite that hot, you know, as that, oh, well, we as ate the, the highest one. Right, 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 we, we, we you know? the pepper. That was fucking hot. Right, right, right. So, but I'm trying to think that maybe that sauce could be hot, hotter than that ghost pepper, you know? If it is, then I, there's no way that I would survive it. Because... <laughs> maybe not, but I mean, maybe... The, the ghost pepper was fucking hot. Right. But if we ate a pepper X, like a, like a real pepper pepper, right. you know, that would be... Exactly. I don't want to think about it. My hot, my mouth is getting hot just thinking about it. Right. Absolutely, man. Yeah, not a pleasant experience, but definitely Conan makes it that way. Yeah.